receivable. No? Let's proceed to accounts receivable. So, oh, AR tayo. Accounts receivable. So, ano po ang AR? Okay, AR normally arises from okay, from uh, claims represent... Uh, AR represent claims from customers. So, normally it arises from delivery of goods or okay, provision of okay, services to customers by the entity. Okay? So, ito, uh, in the ordinary course of business. So, yung hindi, po, hindi mo na binabayaran nung, uh, nung, nung customer. Okay? As the entity, uh, the entity had already provided the service, had already delivered the goods, uh, tapos hindi pa bayad. So, yun yung magre-represent ng AR. So, normally, uh, yung AR na to, hindi siya supported ng any, uh, yung AR itself, uh, yung receivable itself, hindi siya supported ng, uh, ng document. Okay? So, yun yung magdi-distinguish sa kanya sa notes receivable. Si AR, ano lang siya, verbal, kumbaga. Uh, si notes receivable, ano, Okay? Uh, may promissory note na magre-represent ng receivable itself. Okay? Pero may supporting documents naman yan. Anong supporting documents na? Eh di yung mga sales invoice, di ba, na issue natin. Nasusundan po ba? Okay, so ano po ang measurement basis for accounts receivable? So initial measurement yan, initial measurement of AR being a financial asset, it shall be measured at fair value plus transaction cost. Uh, fair value plus transaction cost. And then, ang subsequent measurement basis naman po would be amortized cost. Amortized cost. So, ito per PFRS 9 na yan. Ano? Okay, so, oh, i-identify natin kung ano yung magre-represent ng fair value plus transaction cost and then ng amortized cost. Okay, at, uh, for initial recognition, ayan, Generally, ang AR, since tao-tao lang, tas ang main na activity talaga is yung pagbebenta, hindi yung pagpapautang. So, generally, walang nai-incur na significant na transaction cost. Nasusundan po ba yun? So, pero kung binigyan ka ng problem na ng transaction cost directly attributable para dun sa receivable, all you have to do is to add it up. Nasusundan. Pero rare yan. Okay? Kasi nga, generally, walang transaction cost na may incur so, ngayon, alamin natin, ano naman ang magre-represent ng fair value okay, na i-recognize -re natin as, part, uh, as receivable or as AR. So, yung fair value po na to is generally represented by okay, the invoice price. Ayan. Nalala mo pa, paano po mag-determine ng invoice price? So, invoice price will be calculated as follows. So, list price, or list price less, okay, so, tanggalin natin ang Trade discounts, rebates, okay, rebates, and other similar items. Okay, and other similar items. Example ng other similar items would be quantity discount. So, yung balance nyan, o eto na yung invoice price mo. O from that calculation alone, ano yung mga concept na babawunin mo? Trade discounts, rebates, and other similar items will not be recorded in the company's books. Bakit? Saan nagsimula ang recognition? Ang recognition nagsimula doon sa invoice price. Diba? Tinanggal niya na kaagad yung trade discounts, rebates, and other similar items. So, automatic, hindi ito naka-record. Nasusundan yan? So, saan niya i-reksisimula? O, doon sa invoice price. O, tapos, magbabari na lang, depende kung paano niya i-account yung uh, sales discount or yung uh, cash discount na yung offer niya. Pero, papakita na lang natin mamaya. So, generally, ah, kung magkano ang indicated sa invoice, yun yung magiging recognition ng, uh, yun yung amount to be, uh, to be recognized as AR. Is that clear? Okay, next. O, ano naman po ang magre-represent ng amortized cost ng AR? So, yung AR natin, o, ito yung amortized cost po, mas popular sa atin as realizable value. Diba? So, paano tayo nagdi-determine ng realizable value? So, realizable value would be AR less allowances. Ayan. So, less allowances. So, ano yung mga popular na allowances natin? So, allowance for okay, bad debts. O, ito, sa lahat, no? Siya yung pinaka-common uh, na pinag-uusapan. Allowance for bad debts, ano pa? O, pwede rin po, allowance for sales returns, sales allowance, and sales discounts. Nasusundan yun? So, allowance for sales returns, allowances, and discounts. Okay, and then, another possible allowance pa would be allowance for freight charges. 
Ayan. So, paano magre-reduce ng AR yan? So, yun yung pag-usapan natin in Adita, no? So, ang amortized cost will be calculated as follows, no? So, yung total nito, ay okay, gross AR, o oh, eto na yung NRV mo. Yun yung magre-represent ng net realizable value. Nasusundan? Okay, so, ayun. So, yan na yung amortized cost natin. So, ngayon, pag-usapan natin oh, kung paano po gumagalaw ang receivable account. Oh, Tapos, ano yung mga transaction na magpapagalaw sa kanya together with the transaction that could affect yung ating allowances. So, basic muna, AR, kailan tuloy nagkakaroon ng AR? Pagka nagkaroon ng, oh, ng same transaction, di ba? So, ang AR natin, yung ledger mo ng AR, okay? So, normal balance being an asset, Diba? O beginning. Tapos para mas madali lang mag-squeeze, diba? Pinopost natin yung ending sa kabila. Nasusundan yun? Okay, next. O, pero this will be increased by credit sales. Ayan, next. Ano pa? Normally, this will be reduced by collection. Ayan, collection. Nasusundan muna. O, tapos, ayun. O, normal balancing figure. O, di, nasa debit. No? Or, nasa credit. Wait, pero debit balance yun. Ha? Okay, so, yan yung normal na mga transactions na magpapagalaw sa AR. Okay? Hindi pa natin ako consider yung mga uh, possible na mag-create uh, mag ng reductions. Diba? Bad debts, returns, allowances, and discounts. And then, of course, yung sa free charges. Okay. Unahin po natin yung allowance for bad debts. O accounting for bad debts. So, per PFRS, anong method ang allowed to be used? Okay? So, di ba may dalawang methods na common na pinag-uusapan dyan? We have your okay, allowance method and then the direct right of method. Okay, per PFRS po, ang acceptable lang ay allowance method. O, ang direct write-off, okay, hindi yan ginagamit. Bakit? Anong primary reason? Okay, violation siya ng matching principle. So, paano? So, pakita po natin. So, paano ginagawa ang allowance method? And then, paano ginagawa ang direct write-off? O, di ba? Yung direct write-off, hindi acceptable. Pero, nandun palagi kasi kino-compare siya sa allowance method. So, under the allowance method, kailan po mag-journalize dito? So, una, if the, uh, when the entity estimated okay, certain accounts to be uncollectible. Ayan, so, kahit na uncollectible pa lang yung mga receivables, estimated to be uncollectible, uh, magre-recognize na siya ng bad debts. Ayan, so, anong proforma entry niya? Debit, bad debts, credit, allowance for bad debts. Masundan po ba yun? Okay, next. O, sa direct write-off method, ano po ang magiging journal entry na? Okay, so direct write-off, di ba, from the name itself, pagka-sure na lang na hindi mo na makukolekta, doon ka, ka na lang mag-recognize ng bad debt. So kung estimated pa lang to be uncollectible, o no entry pa lang siya dyan. Okay, wala pang entry na gagawin. Clear po ba? Okay, next. O, di ba, after na estimated, O, pagka-proven, ayan, o, ito na yung ira-write off, di ba? Proven to be uncollectible. So, ano ang magiging journal entry natin under the allowance method? Okay, under the allowance method, debit, allowance for bad debts, kasi nirecognize mo na yung expense, ano? So, dinirecognize na lang natin yung create nating allowance. So, credit, AR. Ayan. So, O, wala nang ni-recognize na expense. Nasaan yung expense? No, in-estimate mo lang. O, pero sa direct write-off, ano po ang magiging journal entry niya? Debit, o, bad debts, credit, AR. So, ayan. Proven to be uncollectible. O, paano naging violation yan ng matching principle? O, eh, kasi, di ba, ang normal tendencies niya, na, ba, nagkaroon ka ng sale ng 2019, O, dapat lumipas yung substantial period of time para masabi mo proven to be uncollectible na yan. Nasusundan yun. So, napakalaki ng possibilities na ano, o, yung sale nangyari ng 2019 pero proven to be uncollectible na siya ng 2020. Doon pa lang siya magiging proven to be uncollectible. O, tignan mo, ah, nandito yung revenue pero nandito yung recognition ng expense. So, may accounting mismatch. Nasusundan po ba? Eh, di ba, ang sabi ng matching, lahat ng cost associated to generation of revenue should be recognized in the period when the related revenue has been recognized. Nagets mo yon. So, napakalaki ng tendencies ng accounting mismatch. Is that clear? 
kuhan? Okay, next po. O, tapos, ano pa ang another transactions na uh, another transaction na ina-account dito sa uh, bad debts? O, possible na yung proven to be uncollectible, unexpectedly magkaroon ng recovery or makolekta niya. Ayan. So, ano po ang magiging journal entry pagka-allowance, under the allowance method? The entry would be, o, ang gagawin po doon, yung ni-write off niya, i-reverse na lang yan. So, debit AR, credit allowance for bad debts. Okay? And then, para masabing na-recover, dapat merong collection. So, debit cash, credit AR. Nasundan yon Okay. O, next. O, tignan mo. Di ba? So, from the journal entry, ma-identify mo, dinebit niya yung AR, tas credit niya rin yung AR. So, pwede natin i-offset. Di ba? So, pwede magkaroon ng compound entry to na debit cash, credit allowance for bad debts. Nasusundan yan. So, generally, ang entry po na gagawin, ito, yung dalawang entry. Kasi nga, ang normal reaction, pag nagkakaroon ng collection, okay, saan niya, anong, saan niya i-charge? Diba? Debit, cash, credit, receivables. Nag-gets mo yun? Okay, so, ay, diba? yun yung magiging journal entry dyan. O, next, o, under the direct write-off method, ano po ang magiging uh, journal entry niya? So, ganun rin, i-reverse niya to. Debit AR, credit, bad debts. O, debit AR, credit, bad debts. Okay, next. O, tapos ano po? O, tapos para masabing may collection, debit, cash, credit AR. Tapos pwede uling mag-compound entry, di ba? So, anong compound entry niyan? Debit, cash, credit, bad debts. Next. O, generally, bad debts yung pagrecreditan. O, kaya lang pag walang bad debts during the period, di ba? May tendencies, di ba? Na walang bad debts, mag-ano ka lang, mag-credit ka ng o, miscellaneous income. Nasusundan yun. Okay, kasi hindi naman pwedeng abnormal balance yung bad debts mo. Nakuha? Okay, so, ayan yung magiging journal entry niya. So, Ano po yung mga common na questions dito sa theories yan madalas ano o kaya o pag sa odd prob naman gagawin siya magde-direct write off siya eh dapat for PFRS gawin niya yang uh, gamitin niya alawan so paano mo itatama o ikaw ba yan ha nasusundan yon okay so tingnan natin okay so ano po ang magiging effect kapag ka nag write off ka okay sa ano magiging effect sa net income pag nag write off tayo ng receivable answer Net income, under the allowance method, anong effect sa net income? Di ba, ito yung entry. May effect po ba sa net income to? Answer? Meron wala? O wala, di ba? Kasi parehong real accounts yan. Nasusundan po. Nakuha yon. So, walang effect yan sa net income. Okay? Kasi wala namang income account, walang expense account yan. Right? O anong effect sa working capital? Pagka nag-write off ka ng receivable under direct write-off, or under allowance method. Answer? Working capital. Answer? Wala rin. Diba? Kasi babawasan mo yung AR, pero babawasan mo rin yung ibinabawas sa kanya by the same amount. Nasundan po yun. Alba, 100 originally, tas 10 yung allowance. Tas nag-write off ka ng 2,000. So yung AR mo, 98 na lang. Tapos yung allowance mo, 8,000 na lang. E di 98 minus 8, 90 pa rin yun. Nung hindi ka nag-write off, 100 minus 10, 90. So, same pa rin. Nasundan mo siya. Okay, so, yun yung mga, ano, yun yung mga i-analyze natin later on. Nakukuha po ba? Okay, so, ayun. So, tignan mo, ha? I-analyze natin, o, tandaan na, ang acceptable lang po per PFRS would be your allowance method. O, kung i-analyze natin yung allowance for bad debts account, paano po siya gumagalaw? So, anong account uli ito? Contra asset. So, anong normal balance? Credit, di ba? So, post natin dito, beginning, and then, o, kailan nagtumataas ang bad debts natin? Pagka nag-recognize ka ng expense. O, tas pagka nag-write off, anong nangyayari? O, bababa, di ba? It will be debited. So, write off will be charged okay, sa allowance for bad debts. And then, pag nagkaroon ng recovery, ano pong nangyayari? Di ba? Definitely, i-credit mo siya. So, your allowance for bad debt ac uh, bad debts accounts Okay, will increase diba? by the amount of recovery. Ayan. So, yan yung mga nagpapagalaw sa kanya. So, di ba, ibabalansin natin yan. O, tapos, squeeze natin yung ending balance. Nasundan po ba yun? Okay. Next. Next po. 
Ano pa? O paano nag-estimate ng bad debts? Paano po nag-estimate ng bad debts? Diba? We have different methods. So, we have your percentage of sales. Okay? Ano pa? Percentage of AR at saka aging of receivables. Basta po nakabase yan sa percentage of sales. So, the emphasis would be on the income statement. So, proper determination of income. Kaya nga, di ba, pagka percentage of sales, credit sales multiplied by certain, uh, kung ano man yung uh, bad debt rate, ano na ang magiging resulting figure? Expense. Di ba? So, expense na yon. So, yun na yung bad debt expense mo. Nasusundan po ba? So, ang mangyayari, alam mo to, alam mo yan, alam mo yan. Tapos, i-estimate niya, okay? So, malalaman niya kung magkano yung appropriate expense. Tapos, i-squeeze niya ngayon yung ending balance. Nasundan po ba? Okay, next. O, pagka percentage of AR or aging of receivables, so, asa ng emphasis? Proper asset valuation. Okay? So, ano ang magiging resulting figure? Ang resulting figure mo would be the ending balance. So, ang mangyayari, di ba? Pagbalik tayo dun sa simula, di ba? Ito yung mga items na alam mo na. Tapos, ma-identify niya to ang i-squeeze niya naman yung expense na i-recognize uh, during the period. Nasusundan mo siya. Kaya po madali ito kasi ano lang, di ba? Sa lahat ng receivables, di ba? Si AR yung pinakamadali. Kasi madali lang yung, kumbaga simple yung mga transactions niya. Nakuha po. Basta familiar ka lang kung paano gumagalaw yung mga related accounts. Nakuha? Okay, next. So, paano makaka-apekto sa AR account yung ating Uh, yung ating accounting for bad debts o oh, nasa ng AR kailan gumalaw ang AR nung nag-write off so pag nag-write off your AR will be reduced by the amount of accounts written off next ano pa di ba sa recovery pwede siyang gumalaw so paano yan pag po ang collection mo is inclusive of recovery okay pagka including recovery yan anong entry ang ginawa niya yung dalawang entries o yung isa lang Answer, di ba? Gumalaw yung AR. So, nandito yon. Kasi kung isang entry lang, cash allowance for bad debts, walang okay, movement sa AR. Eh, pero, including recovery to. Okay? So, ito yung entry niya. So, pagka inclusive of recovery yung collection mo, dapat, ito yung ginawa niya doon, no? Okay? Dapat gawin niya rin tong entry na to. So, dapat mag-post ka rin sa debit ng amount of recovery. Nakukuha. So, ulit na, pagka-including recovery, lagay ka dito ng recovery. Clear? Pero pagka-excluding recovery, okay, so ito yung gagawin niyang entry. O, di, gagalaw ba yung AR pagka hindi, uh, pagka-excluding recovery yung sa collection? Hindi. So, hindi mo kailangan mag-post ng recovery doon. Nasusundan siya? Nakuha po? So, ganun, yun yung magiging effect ng bad debts natin sa AR account. Clear? Clear so far? Okay pa? Yes. O, next, o, allowance for sales returns. Allowances and discounts. Okay, so for sales returns and allowances, okay, for sales return, o, di ba, ito may direct method and uh, allowance method, right? Kaya lang, hindi ganun ka significant, katulad para sa, uh, hindi siya katulad nung sa bad debts. Pagka direct method sa sales returns or accounting for sales returns, ano yung entry niya? Debit, sales returns, credit AR. Pagka nagbalik na. Ganyan lang yung entry niya. O, pagka allowance method naman siya, anong magiging entry niya? Pag allowance method po, i-estimate niya kung sino yung magbabalik and then credit, allowance for sales returns. Nasusundan yan? O, tapos pagka nagbalik na ng goods, ang entry niya, allowance for sales returns, credit AR. Nasusundan mo siya. Oh, so, nakita po yung difference. O, oh, di ba? Ano yung mas common na ginagawa natin? Yung first na, na procedure or itong uh, next na uh, set of entries? Di ba? Yung mas karaniwang ginagawa natin, ito. Okay? Kasi nga, immaterial lang yung mga, uh, yung difference. Ay, yung difference niya. Kaya, hindi ganun ka-strict yung standards natin. O, oh, pero nonetheless, ano, pareho lang po yung magiging effect. Kaya, ano ang magiging effect sa AR? kung magkano yung actual na ibinalik. Di ba? Doon lang naman i-detect yung or ibabawas yun sa AR. Nasundan mo yun? Okay, so, yung AR natin will be reduced by yan, sales return. Kung magkano yung binalik. Clear po ba? Okay, next. O, similar with sales allowance. Ganun lang rin. So, ano po ba ang sales returns? Ano ang sales allowance? Anong difference niyan? Sales returns, 
may actual return of goods. Sales allowance, ano, wala, hindi lang ibabalik yung goods, pero magkakaroon rin, uh, magkakaroon, magkakaroon rin ng reduction sa receivable. Parang ganito, halimbawa, nag-deliver ka ng goods, okay, so mali, o, tas nasira, eh di, anong tendencies? Diba, ibabalik yan kasi mali or sira yung goods. Eh kaya lang, kung wala ka rin namang benefit na madederive, anong pwede natin gawin? O sige, buy, uh, buyer, i-dispose mo na lang yan. Sige, reduce na lang natin yung receivable mo. Pagka ganun, ang greenant mo, sales allowance. Nasundan mo siya kasi hindi na kailangan ibalik yung goods. Clear po ba? Kasi pagka binalik yun, magiging incur pa ng pamasahe, eh di, lala, baka lumaki pa yung gastos natin. Nakukuha po ba? So, yun. So, ang entry niya, debit sales allowance, credit AR, direct method. Tapos, dito naman, debit sales allowance, credit allowance for sales allowance. And then, pagka nag-grant ka na, actual granting na, allowance for sales allowance, credit AR. Nasusundan mo siya? Okay, yun. O, oh, sige. Next po. O, accounting for sales discount naman. So, ayun, pwede rin to ha, yung sa, sa sales discount, direct method, Debit sales discount, credit AR. Tapos, allowance method, gano'n. Okay, kaya lang, mas popular na pinag-uusapan sa accounting for sales discount. Okay. Ano, yung dalawang method, yung ating gross method, and then, of course, yung ating net method. Okay, so, under the gross method, paano po siya nagre-recognize ng receivables? Okay, so, sa gross method, debit AR, credit sales at gross amount or gross invoice price. Next, oh, under the net method, paano naman ang recognition niya? Debit AR, credit sales, o oh, naka net of discount na yan. Nasusundan po ba yun? O, oh, di ba? Obviously, sa kaya, kaya gross method at saka net method yung pangalan. O, oh, what if the, dis, uh, the receivable will be collected within the discount period? Ano po ang magiging journal entry niya? Within the discount period. So, debit cash, magkano matatanggap natin? Net amount or net of discount, right? Pero ang ikakancel mo na AR, o oh, gross. Nasusundan yun? O, oh, tapos saan natin siya charge? O, okay, sales discount. Ayan. Nasundan po ba yun? Okay, next. O, paano naman pagka net method? Sa net method, debit cash, net yung matatanggap mo, and then, magkano yung AR na ikakancel mo? Net lang din. So, balance na tayo? Yes. Nakuha yan? O, next. O, paano po pagka beyond the discount period naman? Beyond the discount period. So, magkano makukolekta natin? Gross invoice price, di ba? Kasi hindi siya entitled sa discount. Okay, so debit cash, o gross amount, and then AR, kakancel mo yung gross invoice price. So balance na tayo? Yes. So anong concept niya? So dito, magkano magiging net sales? Di ba? Yung sales, yung gross invoice price, yung binenta niya talaga. Tapos anong magiging contra sales account? Yung sales discount. Kailan lang nagkakaroon ng sales discount sa gross method? Pagka na-avail yung discount. Nasundan yon So pagka hindi na-avail, yung hindi na-avail na discount ng customer nasaan? Part ng net sales. Nasusundan mo siya. Okay, so kaya siya, ang, ang net sales niya, sales, yung gross invoice price, less sales discount availed by customers. Nasundan yon Yung not availed, nandun pa rin. Nakukuha. O, next. O, dito naman po, paano kapag ka nagbayad beyond the discount period? So, debit cash, magkano matatanggap niya? Gross. Okay, and then, AR, magkano ikakancel natin? Net. O, tapos, magre-recognize siya ng sales discount forfeited. Ayan, sales discount forfeited. So, anong treatment sa sales discount forfeited? Okay, other income po yan. Okay, so other income account. So, magkano ang net sales niya? Tingnan mo ha. So, sales, di ba? Ito, net of discount, whether taken or not, right? Tapos, yung hindi na avail na discount, tasaan? Other income. Kuha po. So, sino ang mas malaki ang sales? Net sales. Sino mas malaki ang magiging net sales? Answer? O, yung gross method. Kasi yung hindi na-avail, nandun kasama siya eh. E dito, whether availed or not, di ba? 
tatanggal siya, binawas niya. O, tas yung hindi na avail, okay, itretreat niya as other income. So, sa bottom figure, same lang. Pero sa net sales, mas mataas sa gross method. Is that clear? Okay, so paano nagkakaroon ng allowance dito? Di ba, ito, uh, syempre, yung sa allowance dito lang. Okay, so, paano nagkakaroon ng allowance for sales discount? O, di sa dul, di ba, ito yung actual na pag nagbayad na siya. Okay, magkakaroon ng allowance yan kapag ka sa dulo ng taon, halimbawa, may mga customers pa na entitled sa discount, pero ang cut-off mo, December 31, pero pwede pa silang mag-avail kahit na hanggang January 5, Diba? So, as of December 31, i-measure mo O sino pa yung mga customer ko na pwedeng mag-avail ng discounts okay? So, since hindi pa sila talaga nagbabayad diba? okay, Anong magiging entry mo? So, debit sales discount, credit, allowance for sales discount Nasusundan mo yun o, Kaya may allowance for sales discount o, kaya, nga, ang, kaya lang, sabi nga natin Yung sales returns, sales allowance And then, uh, sales discount allowances Ayan, uh, walang ano yon. Hindi siya masya, hindi siya common na tinatanong. Ano? So, kung may ma-masterin ka dito, ano po? Yung sa budgets. O, kasi yon yung pinaka-popular sa. O, pero syempre, mas maganda na familiar din tayo dito. Okay po? So, paano makaka-apekto sa AR yan? O, di ba? Yung sales allowance, yung granting noon, bababa rin yung AR. Pag nag-grant ka ng discount, okay, bababa rin yung AR mo. O, ingatan mo na lang. Pagka ito, parang, di ba, pagka collection inclusive, sabi natin, mag-post ka din dito ng recovery. Pagka excluding to, okay, huwag ka nang mag-post ng recovery doon. Nasusundan yun? Okay, next. O, ganito rin. Dito rin sa credit sales. Pagka ang pinasok mo dito ay net credit sales, hindi mo na kailangang mag-post ng SRAD dyan. Pero pagka gross yan, ayun, bawas mo yung sales returns, allowances, and discounts. Is that clear? Okay. Next po, oh, allowance for freight charges. O oh, paan, kailan nagkakaroon ng allowance for freight charges? So, dapat ito reduction sa receivable. Okay, so paano po yan? So, di ba, may FOB shipping point, FOB destination. O, oh, paano mo malalaman kung kailan magkakaroon ng reduction sa receivable doon? E di dapat, ang dapat magbayad ng freight ay si seller. Tapos, ang nagbayad si buyer. Para mabawasan yung utang ng buyer. Nagigets po? So, anong term yon Ang dapat magbayad, seller, pero ang nagbayad, buyer. Ano yun? FOB? FOB? Destination? Freight? Collect. Diba? So, ang dapat magbayad, yung may-ari, eh, si seller, diba? Pagka FOB, destination. Pag freight collect, ang nagbabayad ay si buyer. Nasundan po ba? Eh, ia-advise na lang to sa dulo. Eh, ay pag nag-remit na. O, ito yung amount na... Uh, freight na binayad ko. O, kaya lang, as of December 31, uy, sino yung mga okay, nakatanggap na ng goods na hindi pa nagre-remit, okay, na ako yung dapat mag-shoulder nung, nung, nung freight. Okay, so, estimate na yun. O, debit freight out siya, or transportation expense, or delivery expense, credit, allowance for freight charges. O, kaya may allowance. Nasundan yun. Nakuha po ba? O, sige. So, ayun. So, dapat yan yung term. Ano? Naku, eh. So, tignan natin. So, paano po gumagalaw yung ating uh, AR? Ito na. So, wala na, no? Ayan. Tapos, oh, squeeze lang natin ending para mas madali lang mag-work mag back. Okay? And then, allowance lang. Kuha po. So, pagka yan, nakabisado mo na, kahit na nung tanungin sa AR, syempre, kaya natin sa detail. So, let's illustrate these concepts by answering yung ating uh, first uh, few items. Ano? So, sige. So, dura lang po ako. One. So, anong hinihingi? What is the amortized cost of AR? So, ano to? Net realizable value. So, syempre, dapat alam muna natin yung AR. O, kung di pa sanay, sige, labelan mo, di ba? So, sa simula, di ba, dapat may label na para hindi nalilito, di ba? Okay, so, beginning balance, credit sales, anong magpapagalaw? Collection, right of sales returns, allowances, and discounts. So, yun yung mga i-anticipate natin, okay? So, an entity provided the following information for 2019. So, accounts receivable, January 1, magkano daw po? 2 million, so that would be the beginning balance. Next, credit sales, magkano po? 10 million. O, pag silent yan, syempre, gross sales yan. Ano? 
Next, collection from customers excluding recovery of accounts written off. Magkano daw? O, 8 million. O, dahil excluding siya, hindi natin kailangang mag-post ng recovery dito. Why? Kasi ang entry niya, nung nag-recover, debit cash, credit allowance for bad debt. So, hindi niya pinagalaw yung AR account. Nasundan po ba? Okay, next. Ano pa? Accounts written off as worthless. Anong entry? Debit allowance, credit AR. So, yung AR will be credited at 100,000. Next. O, sales returns. Magkano po? O, dito, sales returns lang. Magkano? 500 thousand, di ba? Debit, sales returns, credit, AR. Next po. So, recovery of accounts written off. So, anong sabi natin? Wala siyang effect sa AR account. Bakit? Excluding recovery yung collection. Is that clear? Okay, next. And then, yung estimated future sales returns and estimated uncollectible accounts. Yan po yung mga required balance ng mga allowance. Okay? So, yan yung ibabawas natin later on dun sa gross AR mo. So, magkano po ang magiging ending balance ng AR natin? So, 12 million. O, oh, balancing figure lang po. So, 12 million minus 8.6 million. Magkano yan? 3.4. Okay ba? Okay. So, 3.4. So, yung gross AR natin is 3.4 million as calculated dun sa ledger natin. And then, less allowances. So, ano yung mga allowances? Una, allowance for sales return. Magkano daw po? Okay, so, 150,000. And then, allowance for bad debts. Or dun sa uncollectible accounts. So, magkano yan? Okay, 300,000. So, magkano ang net realizable value or yung amortized cost ng ating AR? Magkano po ito? Okay, 2,950,000. So, answer po would be letter. Ayan, letter C. Sorry. Nakuha? Okay lang yan? Yes. O, next. O, problem number 2. Anong hinihingi? Doubtful accounts expense and ending allowance for doubtful accounts. So, malamang sa malamang, anong i-analyze mo na account? Allowance for bad debts. So, allowance for bad debts. So, during the current year, the entity reported beginning allowance for doubtful accounts at 200. So, beginning balance ng allowance natin, 200,000. Next po. So, sales, 9.5. Sales returns and allowances, 1 million. Sales discount, 500. So, wala namang effect yun sa, ano, diba, sa allowance initially. Okay, so, accounts written off, 300,000. So, nag-write off siya. Anong magiging effect nun sa allowance? Okay. So, di ba? I-charge na yung allowance mo. Debit. Allowance for bad debts, credit, AR. So, magkano po? 300,000. Next. And recovery of accounts written off, 50,000. O regardless kung mag two entry approach siya or uh, one entry approach Ano po ang mangyayari sa allowance? Di ba? Papataasin niya. Di ba? I-credit at i-credit niya yan. By how much? Oh, 50,000 pesos daw. Nasundan yan. And then, it is estimated that 5% of net sales may prove uncollectible. So, anong gamit niya? Percentage of sales. So, ano ang resulting figure? Pagka percentage of sales, o oh, yung bad debt expense. So, magkano po ang magiging bad debt expense? So, expense on net, o oh, 5% daw po ng net sales. So, magkano ang net sales natin? So, 9.5 minus 1 million minus 500,000. So, that would be 8 million. Okay? So, 8 million times 5%, please. Magkano yan? Ha? 400,000. Okay? O, oh, tapos, squeeze mo na lang yung ending. Nasusundan siya. Okay, so magkano po ang magiging ending? So, 650,000 650,000 minus yung write-off natin na 300,000. So, magkano po ito? 350. Clear po ba? So, magkano ang what amount should be reported as doubtful accounts expense? Sagot? 400,000. And then next, what is the ending allowance for doubtful accounts? 350. Nasundan yun? Okay, so answer for problem number 2 of First requirement is alpha, second requirement alpha report.
Okay na eh. Nasusundan siya. Yeah, basta alam mo lang yung concept tapos paano gumagalaw yung ledger accounts mo, you'll be fine with this. Okay? Oh, next, problem number three. Ano pong hinihingi sa problem number three? What amount should be reported as doubtful account expense for 2019? What is the allowance for doubtful accounts on December 31, 2019? So, on December 31, 2019, an entity reported receivable of 6 million and allowance for doubtful accounts of 1 million on January 1, 2019. So, magkano daw po ang beginning balance ng allowance? Ang gulo nung sentence, no? Pero, 19 nga mo naman yun, di ba? Okay, so, oh, magkano po ang beginning balance? 1 million pesos. Okay. Tapos, binigyan niya tayo ng details ng net credit sales, ng write-offs and recoveries. So, doubtful accounts are provided for as percentage of net credit sales. So, ano siya? Percentage of sales. So, ano magiging resulting figure? Expense. Okay. The percentage is computed annually by using the data of the three years prior to the current year. O, kaya pala binigay na yun for us to estimate kung ano yung magiging basis ng bad debt. So, yung percentage. Ano? So, so based from the given information, so paano po natin malalaman kung uh, magkano yung percentage. So, nandiyan yung net credit sales. And then, yung write-offs. Ano yung write-offs in effect? Ito yung, di ba, yung, yung proven to be uncollectible. Kaya lang, portion yan, potentially na na-recover. Kaya nagkaroon ng recovery. Gets po ba? So, in effect, magkano lang ang nawala kay entity dyan? Ang nawala lang po kay entity dyan would be write-off less recovery. Nasusundan po ba? Okay, so out of that total sales, oh, para ma-compute mo yung percentage. So, magkano po for the last 3 years ang write-off? 400 plus 600 plus 700, that would be 1,700,000. And then, yung ating recoveries, magkano po? 30 plus 70 plus 120. So, magkano yun? 220. Oh, diba, in effect, ito lang ang nawala sa kanya. Diba? Out of the total sales. So, magkano yung total sales for the last 3 years? 9 million plus 13 million plus 15 million. Magkano po yan? 37 million. Ayan. 37 million. Okay? So, ilang percent ito? Okay, 4%. So, yan yung magiging basis ngayon ng budgets natin. So, saan siya uli naka-base? Percentage of sales. So, anong mapapompute niya? yung expense which will increase the allowance so magkano po ang net sales or net credit sales so 4% of magkano 20 million pesos so 4% times 20 million magkano yan magkano so bad debts is 800,000 tapos ano pa o binigyan kanya ng details ng right of for 2019, so magkano daw po ang write-off? 650. So, it's a charge yan sa allowance, di ba? Okay, and then, may recovery na magkano? Okay, 150. So, ano nang pwede natin i-squeeze? Yung ending balance. So, magkano magiging ending balance? Ending balance is 1.3 million. So, 1.3. Nakuha? So, anong mga hinihingi sa atin? What amount should be reported as doubtful account expense? Sagot is 800,000. And then what is the allowance for doubtful accounts? Sagot 1.3 million. Nakuha? Yes? So answer po for number 1 is alpha. Number 2 is also alpha. Oh, next, number 3. Anong hinihingi sa atin? What amount should be recognized as doubtful accounts expense? So, an entity provided the following accounts obstructed from the adjusted trial balance at year end. Okay, so, anong napansin mo? Abnormal yung balance ng allowance. Okay lang ba yan? Naka-debit balance yung allowance. Okay lang ba yan? Answer po, oh, answer po would be yes, provided na sa an adjusted trial balance. Nakuha? Pagka-adjusted trial balance, tas naka-debit balance pa rin. O, oh, mali na yun. Nasundan mo? Nakuha po ba? So, kapag ka adjusted kahit na debit balance pa lang yan, okay lang. So, ibig sabihin nun, ang potential na nangyari dyan, may beginning siya, 
na credit tapos ang laki masyado nung ni write off niya di ba kaya nagkaroon ng abnormal balance gets po ba so pero dapat after adjustment okay yung allowance for bad debts mo dapat ang dulo niyan ay credit balance na nasundan siya so tingnan mo oppose natin ang ang an adjusted niya is a debit balance of 50,000 on next so may data ng AR and net credit sales the entity estimated that 3% of the gross AR will become uncollectible. So, saan nakabase? Percentage of receivable. O pagka percentage of receivable, anong makakompute mo? Required balance ng allowance. So, ending. O, di ba? Ending natin. Magkanong ending mo? 5 million multiplied by 3%. So, magkano yun? 150. Yun. So, magkakaroon ka ng adjustment which is yung recognition ng expense, di ba? So, magkano po? Kailangan mong i-credit yung allowance mo by how much? O, i-balance natin, 200,000. So, ang entry niya, debit, bad debts, 200,000, credit, allowance for doubtful accounts, 200,000. So, yung dating debit na 50, credit mo ng 200, eh di may credit balance siya na 150. Did you get that? Okay, so, ayun. So, ang hinihingi sa atin, doubtful account expense, so answer po is 200,000. Nasundan yun? Okay, ito. Yes. O, next. O, problem number five. Problem number five. So, anong hinahanap? What is the required allowance for doubtful accounts on December 31, 2019? What amount should be reported as doubtful account expense for the current year? What is the adjustment to the allowance for doubtful accounts on December 31, 2019? And then, what is the net realizable value of your AR? Okay, so from inception of operations, an entity provided for doubtful accounts under allowance method. And provisions were made monthly at 2% of credit sales. So by monthly provision sales niya times 2%, ira-recognize niya as bad debts. Nasundan? Okay, next. No year-end adjustments to the allowance account were made. The balance in the allowance for doubtful accounts was 1 million on January 1. So, analyze natin. O, ang allowance for bad debts daw natin, beginning balance was, magkano? 1 million pesos. Next po. During 2019, credit sales totaled 20 million. Interim provision for doubtful accounts were made at 2% of credit sales. So, magkano ang nakarecognize na bad debts? So, bad debts recognized by the entity. So, di ba, 20 million daw yung sales, tapos nagre-recognize siya ng monthly provision na okay, 2%. Di ba? So, 20 million times 2%, magkano yun? 400,000. So, may existing balance na 400,000 yung bad debt expense mo. Okay, next. 200,000 of bad debts were written off. So, write off tayo ng bad debts. 200,000. Next. And recoveries of accounts previously written off amounted to 50,000. So, may recovery. So, paano niya papagalawin ng allowance? Increase niya, di ba? Magkano? 50,000 pesos. Okay, so an aging was made on December 31, 2019. So may details ng aging of receivable. So magkano ang AR niya? So ang AR niya, an adjusted AR is 6 plus 2 plus 1,5 plus 500. Nasundan yan? Okay, next. So based on the review of collectability, the account balances in the prior to January 1, 2019 aging category Additional accounts totaling 100,000 are to be written off. So, kailangan mo daw mag-write off ng additional 100,000. Saan manggagaling? Doon sa prior to January 1, 2019 na balance. Nasundan po ba? So, write off tayo. O additional write off. So, anong entry pag nag-write off ulit? Debit allowance, credit AR. Nasundan? So, magkano yan? 100,000. So, yung AR mo... 6 million tapos 2 million and then 
Tapos yung 500, magkano na lang ngayon? 400 na lang yun. ba? Diba? Kasi nag-write off ka na. Clear po ba? Uh, next. Effective December 31, 2019, the entity adopted aging method for estimating the allowance for doubtful accounts. So, anong gagawin natin? So, compute tayo ng required allowance. So, 6 million, ilang percent daw ang collectible? 10%. So, that would be equal to 600,000. And then, ito po, ilang percent? 20%. So, magkano yan? 400,000. Okay, next po, 1.5 times 30%, magkano to? 450. Okay, and then, yung 400,000, 50% uncollectible. So, magkano ang allowance nun? 200,000. So, magkano po ang total required allowance based on aging of receivables? Sagot, 1,650,000. One million six hundred fifty thousand. Oh, di ba? Eto yung required end. Okay, so post natin. So ending ka na one million six hundred fifty. Oh, tapos kailangan mo balance nito, di ba? So ano kailangan natin? Additional credit or additional debit? So one six fifty, two hundred, one hundred, so one nine fifty. Oh, dito one million plus four hundred plus four plus fifty. 1,450. So, kulang yung credit. So, kailangan mo mag-recognize ng additional budget expense. Ayan. Na magkano? 500,000. So, additional budgets. Nasusundan po? Okay. So, ano ang magiging journal entry niya? Ang journal entry niya po dito would be debit, budgets, magkano? 500,000 credit, allowance for budgets, 500,000. Nasundan yun? Nakuha po. Ayan. Next. So, wala na. Tingnan natin yung mga requirements kung anong na-address natin. What is the required allowance for doubtful accounts? Sagot, 1,650. So, answer po is letter, and letter A. Next po, number 2. What amount should be reported as doubtful accounts expense for current year? So, doubtful accounts expense, di ba? Initially, nag-recognize siya ng 400. And then, nag-recognize tayo ng additional 500,000. So, magkano po ang total bad debts? 900,000. Nasundan yun. So, bad debts, o total bad debts, 400, yung temporary provision, and then yung year-end adjustment na 500. So, that would be 900,000. Kuha? Okay, next. What is the adjustment to the allowance for doubtful accounts on December 31, 2019? So, anong ginawa? O, oh, allowance, ha? So, eto yon. So, anong ginawa natin? It was credited for 500,000. So, ang sagot po is letter O, oh, D, Delta. Diba? 500,000 credit. Kung budget expense, 500,000.